Our next story is about de-dollarization, about ditching the U.S. dollar. We keep hearing about the plans, but how practical are they? Russia's foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, recently highlighted a problem. Listen to this. Uh, we accumulated uh, billions of rupees on the uh, accounts uh, in the Indian banks, uh, and we need to use this money, but uh, for this, they, this rupees must be transferred in another currency, and this is being discussed now. Russia says it has billions of rupees in Indian banks. The problem is they can't use them. This claim raises two very important questions. One, how has Russia accumulated so much Indian currency? And two, why can't Moscow use it? Let's deal with the first question first. India has been buying a lot more Russian oil since 2022. Imports from Russia are up fivefold. The total value is $41 billion. Normally, this trade would be settled in dollars, but not anymore. Russia has been cut off from the global payment system called SWIFT. The result is this. India uses rupees to buy Russian oil. That answers the first question, how Russia got so much Indian currency. Now to the second question, why isn't Russia being able to use this money, these rupees? Because Russia doesn't buy very much from India. Total exports are just around $2.8 billion. They're down 11% compared to 2021. So do you see the problem here? Russia has a lot of rupees, but they don't have anything to buy with that money. It's like a frozen fund. What's worse, this unused pile could grow. Experts say it could reach tens of billions of rupees. So what options does Russia have? Can they convert these rupees into another currency? Well, not quite. You see, the Indian rupee is not fully convertible. It's partially convertible, meaning you can exchange it for restricted purposes only. There's a growing demand to remove those restrictions, to fully internationalize the rupee. What would that mean? You can convert any amount of rupee into foreign currency, say the dollar or the euro or the, or the yen. The downside is this. The RBI would lose control of the currency. Right now, the RBI intervenes when the rupee is in free fall. That's the Central Bank of India. They sell or buy forex to regulate the rupee. But once it is internationalized, that's not an option. The rupee's value would then be fixed by the market, the international market. Is India ready for that? The experts are divided. But the RBI says it is inevitable. It will happen at some point. The Russian experience also shows that. Countries will be willing to hold your currency for only two reasons. A, if they can buy things from you. Or B, if the currency is fully convertible. So that's the job for India, to boost manufacturing and export, to make it useful to hold the Indian rupee. Now, this is a plan that should not be rushed. Once the rupee is internationalized, India will be linked closely to the global economy, which also means more volatility. So preparation and planning will be key. Having said that, the end goal is positive. India could end up saving a lot of foreign exchange, not to mention the prestige of being a reserve currency. India isn't the only one trying to do that. China has similar ambitions. They've tried to internationalize the, the yuan since 2010. It's been a mixed bag, though. China exports a lot, so the demand for the yuan is high. But trust is an issue. People are not confident about China's financial market. Plus, there is a political angle to the yuan. Beijing's plan is is to just, not just to internationalize their currency, but to replace the U.S. dollar. So naturally, there will be a pushback. But India's plans are different. It's about self-interest, not about harming the US dollar. So perhaps a good start is the neighborhood. India and Bangladesh have already agreed to trade in local currencies. Countries like Sri Lanka and Mauritius have also opened accounts in India. It's a good start to build trust in the Indian rupee.